You're listening to DraftKings Network. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. I am going to attempt right now for the YouTube audience to do 40, okay, snorted, uninterrupted minutes. Wow. Snorted. 40. I'm going to give the audience the the purest, purest 49 minutes? 49 minutes. Okay. That's what I tell my wife all the time, too. Hey. Yeah. Let's call it 50. Because it's 12 and a half times four. Let's just say well, 50. I Round want, it up. I wanted to call it 40, but now it's become 50. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you the pure stuff here on YouTube, the most dangerous stuff. You have no idea. With live stuff, a lot of things can go wrong. Now, I made this decision before looking at the crew I had today. Hmm. And I've got a substantive problem because yep. I've got Greg Cody in and he just got done telling me just seconds before we turned off the microphones I think my wife is trying to kill me by overdose. Huh. <laughs> That's a thing that happens. I hope not. <laughs> okay, thank you Billy. <laughs> He's right. But it's a bad crew. Billy is part of a bad crew. It's a bad crew because I got uh, Greg Cody. You can't trust him. He can do bad things on live television. You're welcome. We've got Stugatz, who you know, you're familiar with his work. Mm -hmm. We've got a video crew that uh, is on and off with its judgment. But we've got a particular Billy today. And it is the Billy who is both thrilled and appalled that Tony is back. Who both missed him greatly, but also hates him. And worst of all, I think worst of all, Tony has three weeks of takes. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He also, first thing he did when he came back is he plugged in a space heater and knocked out the board and everything electronic in this room. That's obviously, obviously false. I would <laughs> never put in a space heater, dude. I've been in the heat in Italy and Greece for three right. weeks. Right I'm wearing I'm wearing Italian cloth right now. Like, yeah, what are you talking is. about? <laughs> He's got the look. He does. Got the look. No. You know that look, right, oh, Greg? Man. You come back from Europe, and all of a sudden you think you're European. I'm I mean, surprised yeah. he's not speaking with an accent. He's wearing white linen pants. <laughs> he is a walking, talking IG ad He right is now. beefcake. He is beautiful, and we will. We've oh, missed. Oh, we have oh. missed for a lot of reasons. Tony's top five. We will send him elsewhere in the building to give us his uh, many, many uh, takes. But, Billy, you have to understand something. It's really strange to me. Chris, can you help me as as the glue as the glue guy here who understands and interacts with everybody and nobody dislikes Chris, but the dynamic between Billy and Tony is the strangest thing I have seen in our environment ever because Billy is appreciably happier when Tony's around, but I think it's just because Billy enjoys that someone's worse at this than he is. He loves Wait, to he worse. loves to undermine. What? Billy loves to just sneak in the back door. Whoa. He does. Uh, Billy, I wasn't talking to you. I have plenty of time to talk to you. I was pretty clearly asking somebody else for their appraisal of the relationship the two of you have because Billy is so much happier than I've seen him since Tony left. But also, he behaves in a way that I would call, on and off air, cruel to Tony. More falsehoods. Uh, you said More that, but I'm asking Chris Cody. I agree with you, Dan. No. He, he, Billy, you have this thing where you're like, whenever you're super happy someone's here, you got to look a little past it because it's not for the right reasons. I don't know what to, I don't know what you plan. Uh, you got something up your sleeve. You're wearing short sleeves, but you got something up there. Tony, uh, Tony. Meanwhile, and, oh. and there has been no one around here, no one more patient and just trying to make his way. And he accepts at every turn that Billy perpetually undercuts him. I don't believe we have. Tony's nodding yes, and you're nodding no, Billy. Please, feel free. Tony, do I have any of this wrong? No, you don't have anything wrong, Dan. You've never been wrong a day in your life. The day, the day that I'm here, the first day I get back, I'm sitting, I'm having my protein shake, I'm watching oh, things happen my on the protein, table, and then shake. I got to get back into it. I missed the gym for the last three weeks. No, no, impossible. Anyways, Billy walks up to me, doesn't say a word, looks me up and down. I'm obviously... In the shirt, you can see it on YouTube. You look great. You got more style than most Come around on. here. Like With the elo pants, okay? The what? Elo. Elo. Uh, oh, means geez. linen. He's dressed like a clown. Elo Come pants. On. So he looks me up and down in the chair, doesn't say a word, but gives me the, hey, what are you doing? You look like an idiot. And I and I look at Billy and I tell him, hey, I was gonna I was gonna say something nice to you, but you brought in this energy that I don't like, so I'm gonna turn my back. And then he said, what are you what were you gonna say? And then what was the compliment I gave you, Billy? 
He said you look thin. Look thin. And I said I don't believe it, but thank you for saying that. He didn't that. say that to me. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> where are we, Chris? You side with Tony on this. Billy's objecting and he's saying falsehood, but Billy wears a, a very complicated disguise around here. I, I side right where I stand, right in the middle. They're making a Chris sandwich right now. I love them both. Yeah. I love. I like it, though. I love the dynamic of Billy coming underneath Tony. Hmm. Whoa. A little ham over here. Pause. Baby. We will get in a moment to, I believe, the funniest and most catastrophic thing to ever happen to the New York Jets. That's saying a lot. Wow. <laughs> I just can't believe that Aaron Rodgers' entire Jets career is going to be one pass incomplete <laughs> for zero yards. That last night was, if you were indeed a scripted league, that is the most cataclysmic and funniest thing you could do to the Jets, to Aaron Rodgers, to Monday Night Football. At the Stugatz, the Jets won the game, and I will say to the entirety of the audience that their season just became a regional season. They just went from a national team to a local team, even if their defense is great, right. and that scared little boy Zach Wilson leads them to 9-7. and seven. He looks like a scared little boy. That's because he's scared. Uh, the Jets don't trust him. Uh, he does look scared out there. It's What an amazing turn of events because you have that happen. I've been telling you guys forever, when you play for the Jets, you're not just trying to – overcome your opponent. You're trying to overcome the Jets. The Jets are their toughest opponent. You are trying to come over and you are trying to get past 30 years of bad luck, of jinxes. We are the organization whose best coach should be Bel Bel uh, Bill Belichick. It's not. It's a guy who had a foot fetish. Our best <laughs> quarterback should be Dan Marino. It's not because the Jets decided not to take him. We have the butt fumble. We have so many embarrassing moments. And when I tell you guys we're a tortured fan base, we expect the worst, and you laugh at me, I'm being serious. Because these are the types of things that happen to the Jets. They get Brett Favre. It's the best nine-game stretch the Jet fans have ever had. Then he gets injured. You get Aaron Rodgers, entire offseason, looks great, leader, hard knocks, we're watching it un unfold, and then he gets hurt for it, plays it. These are the types of things that happen to the Jets. When I say I'm surprised Aaron Rodgers even made it to opening night, that's because I am. I was surprised he made it there. I'm surprised he didn't trip over a sprinkler at a practice. <laughs> and here we are. And now, Dan, if you would ask me in that moment, are you going to be able to walk away with any sort of feel good tonight? I would have told you absolutely not. Yet sports is so great because you have this guy, Xavier Gibson, who is a big part of Hard Knocks, who made the team, who cried, was emotional, called his mom right after. One of those stories you love. And that selection by the Jets was validated last night as he returned the punt for a game when he touched down. It was a crazy, crazy night. Crazy night. Tom Brady's still available, though. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get to that in a second. He's not available. Well, he's, he's available, Bill. I mean, he's not playing for a team right no, now. No, but he, he can't Conflict own a team interest. and then play for another team. Oh, oh. Even though he, like, showed up at the Patriots game and says, I'm a Patriots for life, even though you've since been a bu – I mean, I don't want to bring Dwayne Wade into this, but he's since been a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, and now he's an owner of the Raiders. So he's not a, he's not a Patriot for life. Let me, again – Go back for a second, because I don't think you very often get what happened last night, not even from an NFL that is clearly scripted. Josh Allen you're talking about. Stugatz uh, says he Oof. has some feel-good, but uh, that is short-sighted. Want to know today, Dana. Uh, to have some feel-good about that. You became a completely irrelevant team the moment that happened. You cannot not have a quarterback in that league. And it's nice that you can you can wrap it in hope, but what just Those happened... Those are great moments. I mean. No, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying in a season of 17 games, that is a cataclysm that will not be overcome. They have no Super Bowl shot. They started the season, they had one play, they had one throw, zero for one, not one play, one throw where the Super Bowl expectations collapsed on them. They no longer have those. You were saying 15-2. and two. We still have Randall Cobb, though. Uh, and, you still have, <laughs> and you still have Garrett Wilson. He's Garrett pretty Wilson, good. He's great. Yeah. But, man, is he gonna, Nathaniel is, Hackett, he's right. going to get very frustrated this year. But Stu Gatz has for you a top five people who better not be my quarterback, a top five people who might be his quarterback, Yeah. A top five happiest people after Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Yeah. 
and a top one people most upset that Aaron Rodgers got hurt. We will get to all of those shortly. Tony has top fives too, Dan, if you oh, want wow. those. Oh, wow. Uh, he's got a lot of takes. I have been told, Billy, the, the part that... He's dist- got a lot of bad clothes too. I, his, what, he, you keep saying bad clothes. You know what? I'm going to buy you this outfit so you can have some sort of style. I would never. So I, I, can saw, tell. I saw pictures of him when he was on vacation and... It, uh, you know what? Uh, hold on. Before you say that, oh. I've got an issue with Billy. Oh. Billy does this thing on social media where he follows my wife and looks at her stuff. You told me but, to. Yes, what? but Whoa. doesn't. You told me follow no, 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 my listen, wife. Respectfully, She's upset that you don't follow her. Took that bait. Huh? That is true. Respectfully, though. <laughs> Weirdo. I, I understand what you're saying, Billy. But you don't look at my stuff when I post, which tells me that you have me muted, but then you look at me oh, you know through I my might, wife's page. I might have you muted. I know. That might be true. Let me check I that. I know. He found out that one time because I accidentally took a screenshot of something he did on Twitter that I had him muted because it, it shows a little mute button on the top and it was activated. And I forgot that I had him that muted. That deeply hurt me. Yeah. Outside of bit, that deeply <laughs> it's kind hurt of funny. me. Chris Cody, I've got two questions for you. Two questions. One, are Billy and Tony friends? Yes or no? I'm it's not really sure, a, it's actually. It's a yes or... Okay. Yeah. I was Are, just... Uh, during that last back and forth, I was like, this is great. I like right. this little bit. And then I was like, do they like each other? Right, so, I mean, they've so, been flirting yeah. since they got together. They love each okay, other. Okay, okay. I wasn't asking you, but okay. Now, I want... Because Chris Cody's in between them. The Chris Sandwich. The other question I have for you, and this one's more complicated. Yes or no? Is Billy rooting for Tony to do well on the show? <laughs> That's a, that's a loaded question. I, I, I think that Tony is like my younger brother that I don't have. And I try to look out for him, but I also try to, you know, Tony Tony's lacked some bullying in his life. And I feel like this is the role that I fill. I need to build some character. So you feel like you're the in, role that can bully me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, need to, I need to help you grow. Spread your wings a little bit. You know what I mean? Steer you in the right directions. The Lily Gill. That joke's been made. Yeah. <laughs> Greg Cody is here, ladies and gentlemen. He's feeling great. I uh, mean, he's not he feeling great. The Dolphins great. are going no. to the Super Bowl. Oh, I am. Yeah. He's not feeling yeah. great. We will get to the Dolphins in a second. And uh, that was a great contribution from Greg Cody. He Bully looks Gill. great. Yeah. Bully you. Gill, yes. Sometimes it's super tough to fit working out into your fall schedule. Between back to school, work obligations, family, and the return of football, fitness often falls down your priority list as a result. But your fitness shouldn't fall into that trap, especially if you're spending your hard-earned dollars on it. Enter the Peloton app, motivation that moves you, hooks you, and works for a variety of budgets. At Peloton, your routine should never feel routine. Flip the script this fall by tapping into Peloton's endless variety of exercise options with Peloton Bike and Bike Plus. From intervals to club banger rides, your workouts can go from can't face to can't wait. Plus, Peloton's not just a class. It's a fitness entertainment mashup that'll have you whooping along at the top of your lungs and telling your friends afterwards. Plus, it really works. 90% of Peloton households that join at the start of the year are still active 12 months later. Unsure? We've got you. Try Peloton Bike or Bike Plus free for 30 days. Not for you? Return it for a full refund. Find your zone with a 30-day worry-free home trial of Peloton bikes. Visit onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Don Lebertard. That's how it's going to end. The, the, the mailing it in the end of the retirement, Chris, go get me this. It's just going to be him coming out and hitting the one or two notes of that kind of thing, and you know it, and then just giving us finger guns and leaving. Baby. You should listen to the Great Cody Show podcast because that's all we do for 55 minutes a week is just say catchphrases. We even make songs about them. The, and you know it is a song. For crying out loud, that's great. Hopefully, that's a, a, a suey nominee for best song. And you know it, baby, and you know it. Stugats. And you know it, baby, and you know it. And you know it, baby, and you know it. And you know it, baby, and you know it. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Greg Cody has a lot to say as well because of that Dolphins victory. However, he's convinced his wife is trying to kill him by overdose. He is saying when you say he is feeling great, he is not feeling great. He is saying here that he has to take too many pills. He looks a bit ashen. He looks... uh, like he doesn't have enough color in his face. That's with makeup. The yeah. color, well, the, say, the only color that he has is makeup, yeah. but it's like they've put makeup on a bunch of chalk. Right. <laughs> I can't lay down right now because I might look, uh, you know, like I'm not going to get up. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. <laughs> Does Greg Cody presently look embalmed? Yes or no? <laughs> at Lebitard Show. <laughs> 
uh, he, because he does. He, 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 I feel like we did not hire. <laughs> we just hired a mortician, not a makeup person. That's true. That I, he looked the way I imagine he will look in a corpse, in a, in a corpse form, in a coffin. Yeah. Uh, it will be fresh. Days later, it will look something like this. And the least shocking thing, we always joke about this. I'm not lying. I'm looking at his computer. He has the megaphone. He's looking at the numbers oh, for his latest podcast. Totally inaccurate. It's just, it's just refreshing the numbers. You on mean his the latest. Greg Cody Show podcast? No, it's it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence that was on the screen. How's it doing? It's doing pretty well. It's right. doing great. But my wife, she's one of these people. No, no, hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'd like I, to I stay just, here. I got to get this off my we, chest. We'll get there in a second, I okay. promise. And, and I want to hear more from Stugatz on the Jets because I, I really do want his opinion. I want to hear, I mean, if I can't tell you how much I would have paid last night to have a camera on Stugatz and have him talking to get instantaneous reaction of how it is that he felt with that happening last I night. I started to get mad at Aaron Rodgers for merely playing in the Lake Tahoe golf tournament. I mean, what are you doing? If you have a calf injury, what are you thinking? Like, let's go focus on football. There were some funny things that entered my mind. My daughter was at the game. My wife was at the game. And they were devastated. And I texted them an apology because they went there to see Aaron Rodgers. That's it. Plain and simple. They went to that game to see Aaron Rodgers. And then I realized, hey, we got a game to play. We can beat this team. The Bills quarterback is terrible. I mean, and so I called Rachel and I said, do me a favor. Get the fans going. Get some rah-rah. And she's like, what do you want me to do, Dad? <laughs> you did not do that. I don't no, believe I any of this. Yeah, no, she? FaceTimed she? her. Yeah, they were at the game. And I was telling her, hey, just let out a couple. Let's go, Zach's. Let's rally for Zach. Like some of that. Get the crowd going. Let's go. We have a game to win here. We got a game to play. And she hung up on me. Did and you see, Stu or Dan, someone actually had what you said you would pay for, and that was Dominique Foxworth, who was yeah. at Mike Greenberg's I saw that. house I while saw it was that. all going on. I was texting him just for play-by-play. -play. I'm like, what's Greeny doing? How is he? Is it funny? And he's like, no, it's kind of dark, actually. <laughs> I had so many people texting me, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mike was not one of them. It almost happened. No one on this show sent me anything. It almost well, happened. Sorry about that. It, it happened, happened too to fast. You. It happened too fast. Yeah. It was almost too fast to not, like, I wanted to... It, I wanted to laugh more at something like this, but it was just, it was so I quick. I started feeling that. bad for Aaron. Well, it, 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 injuries it, stink, but I the, wanted to laugh. But we, we talked yesterday, right, about the Giants weighed all... Those months for we got the coach now, and Daniel Jones is our guy. Ooh. And sorry, Saquon, but you know, we're not going to pay you enough, but we're going to really use that body this year. And you come out and oof, 40 to nothing. Right. Or the Steelers, you come out and you get one yard, and San Francisco has 199. And, and they're winning immediately, and you're like, oh, all those winning seasons. Yeah, we're not as good as they are. Okay, season's over. <laughs> like, we might win some games and stuff, but oof, this feels terrible. So what but the, it can't feel worse than that. That's, that right there is as bad as it can feel to be the team of expectations when you're the hopeless franchise of don't hope there, don't hope there, don't have any expectations, and then to have the star quarterback, the guy who makes you go from not credible to Super Bowl kind of credible, yep. the best quarterback you've ever had, to have him last a pass. Yep. That was bigger than the Jets, even. That that was the, the biggest story in the entire NFL entering the season was Aaron Jones going to the Jets. And Aaron what will Rogers. he do? Yeah. Or, or Aaron Rodgers, rather. Yep. It, it, that's bigger than the Jets. I mean, it, it's devastating. And I don't use that word often, but but that's a, a devastating loss for the Jets. And I agree, they're, they're n nobody's team now. They're, they're third place. They're going to limp into third place. They'll finish, you know, 7-10, and 10, and that'll be that. That defense is awfully good, though. It's very good. That defense can keep them in a lot but of games. Stugatz, Quinn and Williams no, but, is a must. Stugatz, but don't forget what happened last year, okay? That was a Super Bowl. That was a Super Bowl defense you had last year. Yes. And the reason the expectations came with Aaron Rodgers is because it was like, well, you have the, you clearly have a piece that can win on the other side. We have everything. Yes. And you have a receiver, and that's where the hope and the expectations came from, despite the entire history of being cursed. What are the rules for today? Because like we shouldn't laugh at an injury, but can we laugh at the situation? Because the situation no. is hilarious. I got us on this. While also not celebrating an injury. We just, should, as a show, we should say injuries stink. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. 
Injuries stink. <laughs> but that was so funny though. <laughs> so fast. Kick all the hype, hard knocks, and he just whoop, I'm done. Done for the whole year. Can't you just get anyone that's you not You had the Jets. You could get not Zach Wilson though. Like there's quarterbacks out there. You have pieces. Like you could still salvage this season. Yeah. I think there's a ton of quarterbacks, who, in, including Tom Brady, by the way, who He's would not, love to play for the New York all right, Jets. Stugatz, I do. Uh, did I just hear? Like you have to, you guys have to understand the creature that I'm working with here, okay? Because he's gonna try and protect himself against what is an obviously horrible misery. He doesn't. For as impenetrable as he seems, nothing bothers him. This will bother him. Like, trust me when I tell you, this is the last place that he cares, and so he will lob at Chris Cody there. Season's over. Everyone's laughing at you. You had the Jets last <laughs> night. That's his defense, that you bet the Jets. And he's got, like, he is going to get buried today. Everyone is laughing at his team today. He is tired of this team, instead of expectations, bringing laughter from the universe. A classic win win situation for Chris Cody last night. Dan, they've been laughing at me and my team for 40 years. We're terrible. But, but this, Stugatz, for a while now, has not allowed us to hurt him here. He's a New Yorker in Miami. Dolphins and Jets have gone back and forth for so long. It's the only rivalry the Dolphins actually have anymore. It, we've got all the New Yorkers down here more than ever. They're, they're buying all the expensive houses. They're making property values go up. They're all down here. These are the franchises that hate each other. None of them have mattered. Tua has that day. And wait till you hear how Jets fans will laugh if he gets hurt in game two. <laughs> Well, they they still have the uh, Tua versus the haters rivalry, which might supplant the Jets at some point. But uh, I actually think this was a bit of a uh, 4D chess from Aaron Rodgers. Because now if you Google Aaron what? Rodgers 9-11, we have a new top result. Hmm. Man. I want to get to the top five uh, most redundant jokes you heard on the internet. But because to answer Chris Cody's question, can you laugh at injuries? The internet exists to laugh at what happened last night, inappropriately, without rules. Uh, the internet doesn't have to adhere to cancel culture norms. What happens immediately is everyone goes for not only jokes, but the same joke. Worst track, you know, just you've, you've got a lot of inappropriate jokes on the internet. Do we have a top five list of the top five jokes everyone told so many times last night that I got tired of hearing the top five jokes. So, yeah, we do have a list, and the, the, they're all in poor taste. We'll throw up on the screen. We have the, the most used one right now, which is the, the George W. Bush meme, being informed that Aaron Rodgers is down. Also, you've got Vaxxed, worst tragedy in, on 9-11 involving Jets in New York. You have... Uh, the highlights of uh, Aaron Rodgers' jet season, which is just him running out with the flag. You have, did he consult his doctor, Joe Rogan? Will he treat it with ivermectin? So you've, you've got a lot of uh, easy easy jokes that people made at his the, expense. The, this is the thing, though. This is one of the other things that makes it just super dark comedy. That was a cool moment with the American flag. And do you know... What a battering that flag has taken in that sport and in this country. So much so that at this point, I'm dead serious about what I'm telling you. If someone's got one of those on their truck, I'm not really sure what they're about. And so that flag is something that I'm not sure, though. I, mean. I, I am. I, that, that flag is more something, sure than ever. I OK, mean. <laughs> Re regardless, what I'm telling you is my feelings about that flag have taken a real battering over the last six years and in that league since Kaepernick knelt before it. And yet I, too, was moved. Like, I know who it is that's carrying that flag, holding it as a symbol for America, and that relationship was ours, and it's now McAfee's, and there's a whole lot there in the politics of that. One of those shows now at ESPN, what happened to the a Ro Aaron Rodgers show? Is he still going to do that on Tuesdays? Oh I mean, they they announced uh, Saban and Rodgers is back to a lot of fanfare, and that Bad looks a timing. little bit different yeah. right now. I do want to remind people the history as Aaron Rodgers ran out with the American flag, which should just be a, a sign of unity. But on that a day... A beautiful, it should be a beautiful moment, and I was moved by it. I need to say that on the front end before I go to the jokes. Like, I want people to understand that I don't think that there's anything better with sports than patriotism. I love when people care like that and it feels like the country's united. It doesn't happen very often for it to happen about around sports 
George Bush did it with a first pitch 20 years ago. He did, Dan. That moment, 40 years of being a Jet fan, I will tell you that that moment was the greatest moment I've had in 40 years. And the first three plays, those were the second greatest moments I've right. had. You spent, I mean, yeah. I was so excited. I was so looking forward to see what this would look like and to be stripped of that opportunity because you would agree, as funny as last night was, and I understand why people are laughing at the Jets. I get it, and you should laugh at the Jets, Okay. The funnier way for that to play out is for Aaron just to play and for the Jets to be really bad and for him to be really bad, right? Then they're laughing at me for 18 weeks. Oh, but I don't think that was... (laughs) This will go away in a week, you know? Or once we get Tom Brady. I do think that the majority of the people listening to this know. I feel like, man, that sport's got a lot of uncertainty. But I felt like we could say this with confidence. If Aaron Rodgers was healthy, the Jets were going to be good. Hard stop. Yeah. And that's what is such a bludgeoning blow to a fan base who is not unlike the Lions, but look at how the Lions started their season and look at how the Jets are starting the season. The best quarterback they have ever had. The most expectations they have ever had to have it go down like that on the turf that we have to have a conversation about. Do because we? we do because the Super Bowl players couldn't stand up and nobody cares. And one of their star players just went down. <laughs> and the, t- the just they've the, changed the turf. Just the, so you know. I know, but it just yeah, but it's so bad. No. And that if you watch David that injury, Bakhtiari bad. said that turf is dangerous. I he mean, said it right. It and if very, he was there, I'm convinced this does not happen to Aaron Rodgers. And for whatever reason, <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason, when it comes to the correlation between the the ground up tire bits that are in NFL turf, you don't hear as much about it being carcinogenic as you do for little league soccer and all that. But there are really damning studies on how dangerous those tire bits are for your body and unfortunately it might not be for an entire generation until we see what the true problem is it might go far more uh dangerous than just the achilles but i do want to go back to that moment that unified everybody with aaron Rodgers running out of the tunnel and i do wish i I don't think that aaron Rodgers has actually been questioned about deshaun kaiser's comments from over from about a year ago Uh, because i googled to see if he ever was questioned about it so right now it's just one person saying this but Deshaun Kaiser alleged that the the first time and he said this on the Brunneman show that he met Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers disarmed him by asking do you believe in 9-11 and Kaiser said what do I believe in 9-11 yeah why wouldn't I and Rodgers replied read up on that so to have Aaron Rodgers run out in New York City with the American flag on that day, it does pose some questions. It's not just that it poses some questions. What are you shaking your head about, Cody? I mean, let's, let's be honest. Aaron Rodgers in the last few years uh, has taken on a lot of baggage with his opinions about certain things that make him less than a, a universally liked guy. I mean, you know, if you look at it from a football perspective – uh, I, I love laughing inappropriately, but I can't laugh in any way at what happened, even uh, coming from Miami where we love to hate the Jets, because we're talking about maybe a career-ending injury. And the idea that this all-time great would end his career like that is just cruelty. It, it's uh, cruelty of the fates. This episode of the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz is brought to you by KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Get fired up this fantasy season with eight pieces of spicy marinated hand-breaded wings for just $4.99. Are you kidding me? They're a can't-miss call for whatever the fantasy gods throw your way. In the midst of a managerial hot streak, keep it rolling with KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Did you just assemble the worst lineup in fantasy history? Who cares? You can get eight KFC new hot and spicy wings for $4.99 right now. Marinated in spice, hand-breaded to perfection. KFC's new hot and spicy wings are here. Eight pieces for just $4.99. It's finger licking good. Hey, it's Roy from the Dan Lobatard Show with Stu Gatz. U.S. Cellular knows how important your kids' relationship with technology is, and they've made it their mission to help them establish good digital habits early on. That's why they've partnered with Screen Sanity, a nonprofit dedicated to helping kids navigate the digital landscape. And for a smarter start to the school year, U.S. Cellular is offering a free basic phone on new eligible lines, providing an alternative to a smartphone for children. Start smarter with U.S. Cellular. Visit uscellular.com slash built for us to find out more. Terms apply.
Don Lebatard. I miss crank windows. <laughs> Too many unnecessary conveniences now, cruise control. Please, I've got cruise control built in. It's called my right foot. It controls how fast the car goes. No button or steering wheel lever needed. Power steering. There's another one. Why do I want to give my power to the car? The power that I once had. The car is a ton of metal. I'm a damn college graduate. Stugats. Bluetooth, <laughs> HD radio, satellite. I'll take AM, please, with Wolfman Jack talking through the static. And I'll crank the windows down so everybody can hear. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was yes. back in my day. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Aaron Rodgers, I would say, over the last years, has become a fascinating and polarizing figure after deciding, and he decided this super overtly in a way that athletes of his fame rarely do. He went from hidden insurance salesman, yeah, I'll be your State Farm guy, sure, football needs some stars, his quarterbacks change, I'll just be a commercial pitch man, yep, no problem, I will be face of the league. He decided... Nope, I'm going to let it fly with psychedelics and what I've learned and what I'm doing and what I think. And I'm no longer going to be the quarterback who stands in front of his locker and refuses to give the media anything. He has decided through family trouble and relationship trouble as he has explored his life and gone to learn at how his family has turned him and because he doesn't get along with his family into the person that he is. He's having a midlife crisis as one of the all-time greats and also a human being that you can't explain, as I think, that he's better than any quarterback ever, how it is that Tom Brady won so much more than he did, so that we will never discuss Aaron Rodgers as the greatest quarterback ever. We will discuss him the way we discuss Marino, like, yeah, yeah, he was great, but why didn't he win more? For that legend to take all of those expectations to that city, New York, and to have Aaron Rodgers not be able to make the Jets better, but the Jets to finish his career <laughs> in that fashion for the Jets to swallow him because that, that is in all likelihood a career-ending injury. That is in all likelihood the last play Aaron Rodgers will play. Now, he may come back to that, but I will remind you, this is a human being who was talking about retiring before having to rehab right. at 40, whatever an Achilles tear is. Like, he was already halfway out the door with everything that was happening to the Packers, and he spent the last couple of months telling us how joyfully happy he was to be in a new place. You think that's the way Aaron Rodgers is going to go out? Not a chance. That he's way? Not, he's not done, Dan. I mean, Dan, come on. Seriously. I, I'm just, and I'm just saying it could be because of how hard it is at the yeah. body to recover from that. I'm not saying I'm not saying it he's is. He's going to give it a go, though, Dan. Okay, but I'm saying. Like, if you're saying that, you don't know Aaron Rodgers. Now, listen, I thought Aaron Rodgers was I Jake don't, Owens. Clearly, so, over the I last mean, few years, I don't know Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> If you saw anything that happened with Aaron Rodgers, you mean, are absolutely correct. He's going to be just fine. He's going to come back because I'm pretty sure he restructured his contract where his base this year was like a million dollars and next year he's owed like a hundred million dollars. So right. he's going to be coming back. Also, before the show, we were walking around talking about these injuries and we have people that have, you know, experience with this injury. Yeah. Tony was telling me that his dad has this injury and he's just <laughs> fine and Aaron Rodgers is going to yeah. come back. I don't know about just fine. My dad was playing hoops, felt a, felt a kick in the back, turned around, nobody was there. It's a symptom of an Achilles tear, by the way. Uh, if you're playing basketball or any sort of sports and you feel somebody kick you and nobody's there, who kicked me? That's oh, a wait, problem. It's my Achilles. Yeah. But he's fine. He had surgery. Guy walking around on one crutch. He's fine. I, I will remind you that Dan Marino <laughs> came back from an Achilles injury and and did very well. Came back like at what age? Fully yeah, what not, age? Not at forty. But he was eight years younger. Uh, whatever you can think, whatever you like. I'm not. I don't know if it's a career-ending injury or not. I just know that what is up ahead for Aaron Rodgers is going to physically hurt a great deal, and this was a person who's been telling you for a while, I'm thinking about getting to other things, um, and might take cues from the universe on maybe I should stop doing this, because if he had retired, I, you guys have questioned this, and, I, and you've been right, he hasn't been able to retire, but he spent a lot of the last few years talking about retiring. Yeah, no, of course he doesn't want to go out like that, but can you imagine how funny it has to be to anybody who hates the Jets for Aaron Rodgers to try and bring his greatness to them and have it on Monday Night Football, Aaron Rodgers said before the game, 
He said, nobody dreams about being at one, on one o'clock games. Everyone dreams about being on Monday night. And he came out, Stugatz, on Monday night as the star of the sport with the American flag. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe a whole lot of people objected to that moment. Me, personally, I couldn't get around all of what football's been the last 10 years, him included. We will not talk about Kaepernick this year, nor will we talk about— I was about just going to say, what if this is the solution? What if this is when they bring back Colin Kaepernick? That's Whoa. what Jamel— this scenario. That's what Jamel threw out there. He might be yep. on the list. I don't know. I'm, He's I'm, available. <laughs> he is available. I, uh, I'm officially well beyond eye roll, <laughs> the eye roll tipping point There's when it comes so to Kaepernick. There's so many weapons, suggestions. Though, that he has there. Right. I, I, I'm just—I I can't help but laugh symbolically as art from the cosmos, comedy from the cosmos. End racism is leaving your end zone. It hasn't, by the way. That was fake news. Angeles. It's been there. Yeah. And so and so is it takes all of us. Yeah, it okay, it is yeah. fake news. All right, so end racism, it's not over yet. <laughs> I don't believe we're going to be talking about the American flag the way we talked about the American flag when we were talking about the George Floyd stuff and football and the way football turned on Goodell and Goodell from one moment to the next. Yeah, 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 I was wrong about everything with Kaepernick. It was just stunning to see because Mahomes said, hey, hey, wait a minute. I see you. Hey. And then Goodell's like, okay, 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 okay. All right, Jerry, Jerry, get out of here. Jerry, take your racism and go. get out of here. Everybody get out of here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For Aaron Rodgers particularly to be running out with the American flag, I looked at it and I'm like, NFL, you laundered your racism. You tried to do it with Pat Tillman. We wouldn't let you. You laundered it. You succeeded, NFL. You can do anything. You can do anything. The American flag now means this guy carries it out into New York. It was unbelievable. Like, it's it's the way God would write comedy <laughs> if he hated black people. Wow. Whoa. I do want to give Aaron Rodgers credit for he, he hasn't. Yeah, I mean, he's been very divisive with his platform, but he answered the bell when it came to the George <laughs> Floyd stuff. He totally did. And he was applauded for how he came out with his messaging for the George Floyd stuff. It was the pandemic that got everything kind of wonky and ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is another thing, though. This is like, how can you not laugh at the moment Aaron Rodgers becomes the leader of the Jets? He's out here advocating publicly for psychedelics. It's my guy. <laughs> yeah, we don't care about that as much anymore because he's with the Jets. He's the face of the, the new face of the league. Post Brady, he and Mahomes are the new face of the league. So we'll forgive the, this, the psychedelics. This is all unfair circumstantial evidence, but anytime someone tells me about the healing power of mushrooms, I'm going to cite what's happened to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Hold on, there's some yeah. really good properties to mushrooms. I had some this morning, Lion's Mane. Okay, uh, Billy, let's talk about this because uh, Tony, uh, uh, Tony, uh, uh, Tony does, Tony is that does. Why he's wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Tony grabs a lot of things that pop culture touts, and I believe that at this point. Tony would follow Uberman Lab or Huberman Lab. Huberman, Dan. Sorry. Yeah. Andrew Huberman. Yeah. That's a fine. Is it a fine? Okay, hold on a second. Just a dollar. But uh, I think he's following life choices that Huberman is suggesting here. And so now you're taking uh, some mushrooms in the morning? Dan, I'm taking some lion's mane. I take some turkey tail as well. Turkey tail? Yeah. Some great it's like stuff. a feather? Dan, Dan, no, it's not a feather. It's, it's a capsule. Dan, I know you know about lion's mane and turkey but tail. Is don't it, don't play coy with is, me, Dan. Is lion's mane a psychedelic? Is it, no, is it's it not mushroom? psychedelic. It's I a mushroom. Non-psychedelic. Jake Plummer was on the show, I don't know, a year okay. and some change ago. I mean, and he was talking his, about the healing properties of his turkey are psychedelic. Tail. Okay, I mean, no. have you seen Jake Flummer? Like, I have. He's okay. a totally normal guy, just like Aaron Rodgers. Jake the Snake, Billy. Have you seen Jake Flummer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, continue, please. I don't. I need go no further. 
There are some people in our audience who may not know what Jake Plummer looks like these days, so you can help them because this isn't just visual and you he's have a like microphone. He's like in a bomb shelter somewhere in Colorado where he's oh. growing a bunch of mushrooms that he then tells us are not psychedelics, but they seem very clearly yes. to not mm-hmm. not be psychedelics. There, there, there's a lot of judging books by the cover when it comes to mushrooms, and I'm sure people Agreed. feel passionately about all of this, but there has never been a time ever where someone has told me where someone has espoused the virtues of mushrooms to me where i'm like you know what this person has it all figured out i'm gonna i'm gonna trust them with this (laughs) not once it's mike and at just 96 calories a can miller light is going to be the only beer you'll want to celebrate football season with all season long whether you're at the stadium or playing fantasy football or watching the game at home or at a bar, Miller Lite is here to make your football season taste like Miller time. You know what I like to do? I like to time out the kickoff with the opening of the, the white can. You get that sound? It's perfect. It's like a chorus from heaven. It is the only light beer with a taste worthy of our national obsession. Because what's the point of having a beer if it doesn't taste like, well, you know, beer? You get the taste you crave without the calories. Make it Miller time all season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces.